Hey, making your first $1,000 in web development as a beginner is a big achievement. It means you've successfully arrived in the industry. You've delivered some value to someone and they decided to pay you $1,000 for it. In this video, I'm going to share how I made my first $1,000. This is not to say this is the best way or anything, but it worked very well for me. And I think it might just work very well for you too. So when I talk about making money in web development, there are three methods that come to mind for me personally. The first one is the most classical that many people opt in for and that is getting a job. For me personally, when I was starting out, a job wasn't really an option because I just wanted to build stuff instead of learning for technical interviews that a lot of them require. And then comes in freelancing, where your skill matters way more than any technicalities like in a job interview. That was really appealing to me. It just comes down to your skill and what you can build in freelancing and maybe some social proof. But mainly, if you build well, then people are gonna hire you and I found that really cool. The third option is building a software as a service. I generally don't really recommend this to beginners. There's a lot of stuff involved. Payment handling, delivering actual value, versioning your API, maybe having to develop your own package if you cater towards developers. There's a lot of moving parts into a SaaS. So instead, I want to focus on freelancing, how I made my first thousand dollars. And by the way, if you stay till the end of the video, I'm also literally gonna show you my freelancing template that I used to get my first contract. So when I started, out in web dev i knew a little bit of react and a little bit of next and that was pretty much it and what i decided to do is sign up in a freelancing site that is fiverr and offer my services there can you do that sure can you make money there sure i don't recommend it though and the reason is mostly it's a race to the bottom and what i mean by that is many people offer services for extremely cheap prices on fiverr that are not sustainable whatsoever at the start that can make sense to gather social proof to gather testimonials but you're very much underselling yourself and I think in the approach I'm gonna share with you, you're gonna be way better off instead of having to lower and lower your prices to outprice your competition. So a framework I recommend is three steps. First off, learn the very basics by building along with like a YouTube tutorial. That's what I did. That worked really well for me. You gain an understanding of how projects are built, in which order things are stacked on top of each other to build a full project. And with that knowledge, you can start building your own app. Don't just copy the app and put it on your portfolio. Portfolio. Obviously, you can do that. Is it the most ideal way? I don't think so. Instead, remember what you learned in the video, abstract some videos together and build your own stuff, taking something from each tutorial and building something on your own. And once you've done that, show your work. This is super important. It is the most important step that I ever took when getting into freelancing. Show your work to other people, be that through YouTube, where you explain some concepts behind your work, how things work be under the hood, or or share it on Twitter. But very importantly, don't be the guy that annoys other people. Like, don't go into random comment threads and say, hey guys, look at what I built. No, don't be that guy. Everybody finds that annoying. Instead, very important, deliver value by sharing what you've built. What can other people learn from you and how can they benefit from you building that thing? And if you deliver genuine value to people on how you build that thing, A, people are gonna care about the thing, and a very nice side effect, B, that I also noticed on this YouTube channel, is you slowly build an audience. And the most powerful thing that comes with sharing your work is that people start to pay attention to you. Having clients reach out to you eventually will happen as you deliver more and more value to people. It happened to me, I know many other people it happened to, clients start reaching out to you. And that is one of the best things that can happen to you as a freelancer because it shifts the entire power dynamic. Instead of going to people and saying, hey, can I please do this thing for you? Now you get to select who you want to work with and at which rates. Now, obviously you can't just go ahead and name some insanely high rates. Nobody will want to accept that, but you have way more control than you would if you were on these freelancing platforms, right? Where you have to underprice your competition. It's a race to the bottom and for most people not worth it. And by the way, another really cool side effect of sharing your work is that the clients that start to reach out to you are exactly interested in the tech stack that you're working with. Mostly all of the clients that have ever reached out to me were some kind of React related project. And that is really cool because you don't have to go around searching for projects that interest you in a tech stack you enjoy programming in, like React for me personally, but instead people already know what you're good in and come to you for advice on that thing. And as all that is happening, you're still delivering genuine value to people and slowly building a following. And in the ideal case, as for what happened with my channel, which I'm super 
grateful for. If you deliver enough genuine value to people, what's really cool is that slowly over time, you can take the focus away from freelancing and into focusing on your audience. And all the technical skills that you need to keep an audience engaged and deliver good value you got from freelancing because you actually interacted with people. There are so many soft skills involved like project management, stakeholder management, and also the technicalities of developing for those people. And you can share all that with your audience as well. So it's like the opposite of a vicious cycle. It's like an amazing cycle where one thing really benefits the other and then the other way around. So you can enjoy your freelance work and also have the option to shift your focus later on if that's what you decide to do. Many people also decide to stay in freelancing. That's path number two you can take. Don't focus on your audience if that's not growing too much, but instead stay in freelancing. And one thing I recommend to grow that freelancing thing then is hiring other freelancers as you take on larger and larger projects. Because hiring those freelancers not only saves you time, they might write amazing code, and also you can just scale much more with these freelancers. You don't have to pay employees, because that's a whole different story than hiring freelancers, but just taking on freelancers to assist you with projects can be super powerful. Now, if you're worried at all about the legal stuff, don't worry, I think everybody kind of is. I was at the beginning too. I can't speak for everyone, but where I live in Germany, how it's done is actually pretty straightforward. You don't have to worry about it that much. The way in Germany um, it works is you register kind of like a small company. It costs like 25 euros to set up and to register that. And then all you do at the end of the year is you, well, you keep track of all the profits and expenses throughout the year. I use a separate bank account for that. And then you just put them against each other and what's left you have to pay taxes on. That's the way in Germany. I don't know where you're from. It depends, but it's pretty simple and I wouldn't worry about it too much. And with that said, $1,000 for a freelance project is very realistic. It's not rocket science. Even small websites generally cost more than a thousand dollars. So it's really not rocket science to make your first one thousand dollars, but that is not to discredit the achievement at all. It feels super cool. It feels like you have arrived in the industry. People want what you can deliver and that is development stuff and also of course the soft skills of talking with people is super important. And now let's take a look at my freelance project proposal that got me my first gig. So here's what I've used for my first contract. I've obviously redacted all the information that is personal to either me or my client. Um, but the important thing is all there. It's three pages. So let's quickly go through step by step. First off, we have a quote number and I usually base this off of the current date. So the 14th of August is when I'm publishing this video, 23 and then 01, the first um, you know, quote for this day, if I send out multiple ones a day, then all my details are up here and all the client details are right here. And then the big web development quote. And mostly it's just, you know, thanking them for the trust they place in the services. Um, and then later on getting into the project specifics. If you want, you can take a little pause of the video to exactly read through this. Now, this template has worked very well for me. I've used it in a ton of projects, so feel free to use it for yourself. That's totally fine. And yeah, so I'm asking the client to review this code and let me know if they have any questions. And then we did a meeting beforehand. I do this with all my clients and, um, you know, so we can outline the scope. Very, very important so you don't suffer from scope creep. We define exactly what's going to be part of the work that we do or what's not going to be part. So in this case, that was a certain UI library we were going to use for the project that I was going to do an integration between front and back end. We want a role based auth system. We want to protect sensitive routes and some page speed optimizations. So pretty basic stuff, you know, nothing extremely fancy, nothing super unusual. And then I'm also offering my help regarding project deployment or database management. I also do this on most projects and that I agree that the budget of what we came up with is reasonable for the quality of work that I'm going to provide. And again, thanking them for choosing to work with me, which is really cool. And then as for the last page, the offer acceptance. Now this is very formal. As far as I know, more formal than it needs to be. Again, I'm just saying what works for me. And this is how I did it in my first contract, the offer acceptance, where I signed on the left-hand side, the client signed here on the right-hand side. And that was the contract done. Also one statement I want to highlight right here um, that all content created is um, 
the property of the client. However, I reserve the right to put it in my portfolio. And this bit right here is very important because it allows you to charge higher rates later on as you do more projects because people are going to trust you more and they can also see the high quality work that you provided to other clients that they are going to be getting in your portfolio. And that's it. That's just the three page thing right here. Then at the bottom, there's my details, some contact details and the tax number for tax compliance. It's also important here in Germany. And then the payment details, how they can pay me. Yeah, so that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this little sneak peek. Again, feel free to use this for yourself. It worked very well for me. So I think it might for you too. Thanks very much for watching. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.